I don't stand for inequality. I don't stand for what's happening in the world. I don't stand for greed. I don't stand for how we're, we're acting right now. I don't stand for the perpetuation of a culture that is completely burned out and falling apart. That when a woman can say that to herself, first and foremost, she changes at a cellular level. Her life changes. The actions that she takes changes. Then when she's got that down, she can say that to her partner, to her friends, to her family. Today, we're talking with Hannah Marie Amuse, who is a tantric practitioner and an intuitive guide who works largely around femininity. Today, she talks about societal norms that many are expected to fall into, how to break free of these invisible chains, and how to create the fullest expression of your life. Hope you enjoy this talk. Thank you so much. Welcome to Karma Hub. If all women everywhere were standing up to their partners, to, to life, I just think that there would be like a monumental movement of change in a really foundational way. And so when we come to life and we can be in this space and really sweetly share with another human our truth, it actually creates the opportunity for real growth to happen. We had talked um, a little while ago, and you had mentioned that you know you were you're, you're a high achiever, you're a valedictorian, you did really well oh, yeah. in school, um, yeah. and then you did things to kind of compensate there. You're kind of all over the place, and things shifted for you. Um, mm -hmm. Can you hit on that just a little bit and tell me why you're now doing what it is you do, and then we'll get more in depth as to what exactly that is. Mm, thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Lauren. Um, gosh, it's so, yeah, it's funny to even think about that today, especially, and with the whole, what I just mentioned about like the structure versus the flow in life. So, so growing up, I wasn't really taught a lot of balance. Right. And I don't think we are in school. Um, but even in my home life, I was, I was very, um, I was, I was taught that I was based on the value of my production. Okay. Uh, and I was worthy uh, in regards to the output, the grades that I received, how well I was doing in school, if I was winning track meets and running the fastest, or if I was the most popular, like there was a lot of like, if then in my world. And, um, I, and because I'm a very, um, intelligent woman, I could meet the needs of my family so that I could get my need of being received and, and loved, right? right? So I um, was very good at retaining information regardless of whether it was information I cared about um, to, to, to meet the ability to get the good grades, to show up, to have it all together and to be really well, I, I put this in quotes, liked, like I, I was liked by a lot of people and I was in school. I was very, um, I have a really like nurturing soul. So it was easy for me to be friends with everyone, but then those like deeper connections that were aligned with what I truly wanted. I, I felt that they were missing again because I wasn't being authentic to myself. I was very much so trying to be what my parents wanted me to be. I come from, I wouldn't say we're, we weren't poor necessarily, very classic middle-class Midwestern family. Okay. Um, you know, my dad worked, my mom didn't, but I, uh, I think one of my sisters went to college, but no one really in my mom's side of the family went to college that I remember, or she really wanted us to like go to school, become like doctors, lawyers, and just live that like traditional American dream. Yeah. Um, and I thought that that was it. I really did, except for that I was incredibly unhappy and I didn't have the opportunity to explore what I really desired. And I know that I'm not alone in that, right? I think right. the difference between a public school versus a Montessori school is that public school is like, here's a curriculum, you fucking figure it out. And if you don't, you're a bad student, you're going to get in trouble. You get really poor grades that then affects parts of your life. You know, I mean, it, the system is so built upon how you show up and it is. you can fill in the circle blank or, you know, it's so, it's so fascinating really. And then we question why the world isn't operating at a functional level. And it's because no one's functionally operating. Um, <laughs> it's, it's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so for me, when I finally came to, and, and whatever that means, I think coming to like 
when I just realized like, oh, wow, I'm incredibly unhappy. I am using drugs and alcohol. I actually got kicked out of school. Um, I finished early. I graduated early, still got into college and everything, but I technically got kicked out of school because I just couldn't handle it. It was actually a a huge blessing in disguise, not to my parents, but to me, I was like, oh, thank God. Um, Yeah, I was like, oh, fucking hallelujah. This has been hard for, I mean, we do it eight, what? 10 years. It's like, how is this, how are we perpetuating this cycle? Um, so I think I had a lot of pressure on my shoulders. It, it did feel a very, and I'm going to use this term loosely and we can get into it later, but masculine, like produce, 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 produce. Um, mm-hmm. um, and when I finally, yeah, like I said, came to and realized like, oh, this isn't working. I, I, my pendulum swung to the other side, gotcha. which for me, outside of school was like creative parties, um, you know, really working in a community that was art-based, community-based, very free thinking. So I went from like Baptist raised, educated cookie cutter to like, what is a cookie? (laughs) Um, Like anything goes, no structure at all. And then to really now in, in the space that I'm in in my life is to, to merge those two. And I would say almost like the science of spirituality. So what is, how do we create structure in our lives so that they can move more freely so that we can experience the magic while also knowing that there's a rhythm, you know? And that's the biggest thing is like, can we stay in our rhythm? And when we find that rhythm, then because we have that, we know what to expect enough we can start to move into the unknown in a way that feels safe for our nervous systems. Wow, fantastic. You know, and I think a lot of kids um, have that expectation pushed upon them and they're stuck in this, put rather put in this mold and they don't know how to get out of it. And it looks, sounds like you kind of forced your way out of it and you began exploring at a pretty, pretty early age, right? Mm. Whereas a lot of people, it, it takes, uh, you know, maybe a divorce, maybe a midlife midlife crisis um, to really get their wheels turning to figure out, hey, maybe this isn't quite right. Maybe I should look down some other avenues. But you're one of those avenues, I guess, that people could look toward um, because you are now here to help people with their authenticity, um, their their true you. So thank you for that. Mm. Yeah, you you are one of those types of people I went to 10 years ago or so um, during my divorce because I was trying to figure things out. So these days, what, what is it that you really try and nail down? You, you talked briefly about balance, and I think that's important, but what, what do you mean by that? Mm, balance, wow. Well, I, I wanna say two thank you for that. Um, that, just that share around like the divorce and authenticity, and I, I do, yeah, I, I, I see that in society actually, is that there's so many people that spend a, hot, a huge chunk of their lives moving in the direction of something that then one day they're like, holy moly. And then there's a lot to undo after 40 years. Right. And so I, I am, and I'm just going to say this, and then we can move into your question. It's like, how can we create a society where we're not undoing so much? Because unpacking a life of programming takes a, a little bit more time and a lot more energy. It's like the emotional labor of that is, is just as much as the manual labor of building a new city. <laughs> right. It's so, it's, it's an intense experience. So yeah, I think, and, and this is where I really want to start working with children in the long run is because like, how are we bypassing the programming in, in general so that people can start to understand themselves outside of the parental units, because I think parents too sometimes are like, oh, but this is how I was. It's like, you just created an extremely new life form. They're gonna have a planet of their own to (laughs) to experience and explore. Um, So yeah, thank you for just just saying that. Uh, And you mentioned balance. Yeah, balance. I mean, balance in so many ways, balance in, in how we show up for ourselves, balance and how we show up for others in the world, but balance too. And like the way that we move through our emotions, the way that we feel, the way that we 
create, I think balance for me is like, gosh, and I use myself an example, even though it's, it's vulnerable. It's like, am I showing up balanced? Am I only ever being productive or am I giving myself time to be creative? Am I always being super rigid with my schedule or am I allowing for that flow? Am I giving myself the time and awareness that I need? Am I also reaching out and extending that to others? Am I always, always, always like working in communities that I know need me? Or am I reaching out to like be a part of nonprofits? So balance like in its entirety is this dance of the masculine and feminine or the yin and the yang energies, the right. rest and the rejuvenation versus the production and creativity. But in a very uh, practical sense, it's like your life is made up of these components, this puzzle piece, like, is it whole? Right. In that wholeness, in that full authentic expression, that's where you find home. Well, I had written down something you had said. It said full expression of self. And I think there's most people out there don't get to that point. Don't get to that level. They don't really understand how to fully express themselves um, and to know and trust who we are. Mm. And I don't know, that's, I mean, that's something I, I grasp for all the time. I, uh, mm. I, I feel like so many people just get lost in the day-to-day -day when in fact we should be embracing who we are and allow the day-to-day -day kind of flow through us. Um, I don't know, maybe you can Tell us a little bit more about that. <laughs> that was beautiful. Can you say it again though? Like grasping who you are in the day to day. That was, I mean, that was like, we should put that on a bumper sticker. Oh, good. I appreciate it. I don't know if I can say that again. <laughs> well, what I heard, what I heard you say was, yeah, instead of like letting the day flow us, how do we know ourselves and then like let ourselves move with our days, right? Yes. That's kind of what I heard. And, and, and yeah, it's funny. That's exactly what I meditated on, on this morning. Right. Okay. Yeah. Because when we come into our center, when we come into, um, the spine, our truth, our bodies are such a mirror for our reality, right? Like the stronger that you feel connected to your core, the more that you can live out your core values because you're in that stability. And so then when you're met with change, when you're met with frustration or anger from others or from life, when you know who you are, it's easier to understand and empathize with these experiences. But because there's such a strength there, you know that you can also meet those things. You can meet them, you can hold them, you can give them a little bit of like tenderness. And then from a higher state of consciousness, know that like, oh, okay. And here's a, here's the solution to the problem. Cause life is really just a set of problems that we're constantly finding a solution to. But if we constantly feel attacked, if we constantly feel like undermined or unavailable or so rigid, if it's not going our way, it's not going at all, you know, <laughs> but when we can meet these things, when there's like the bamboo, right? The bamboo is very strong, but it flows. Okay. Yes. When we know ourselves like bamboo, like I'm solid, I'm strong, I've got this, I'm confident, I'm creative, I'm communicative. Then when things come up, instead of that initial reaction, there's a breath and a settling and a pause to, to assess a situation and then to truly respond so how do you get people to that point lifetimes of practice good answer <laughs> unfortunately that's also true yeah. it doesn't exactly happen like that but your awareness sometimes can clue you in it, that it's something that in a moment's in a moment you can realize that that's something that can be achieved something you can strive for and a um, exercise that you can um, start to do on a regular basis that would be very helpful. Um, so in that sense, it can be done like that. But then it's an exercise that stays with you, hopefully, right? It's an intro, in, thank you. Yeah, it's an integration of a lifestyle change. Right. And it does, it's like a snowball effect. It starts incredibly small, 
whether it's on a yoga mat or a meditation cushion, but through that consistency, consistency is one of my favorite and hardest words of this lifetime. And I say of this lifetime, because there was a time in my life where I thought I would be consistent for a year and then it would be enough. (laughs) I would be consistent this week and next week I would be able to just be. And, and I, and even for me, you know, coming from like, the perfect mentality, like be perfect growing up, be a good student, be this, be cha-cha-cha. It's like, oh, you just want to break after that. Like, well, that was really hard. So if we can create a lifestyle of consistency, and I mean like consistent self-reflection, consistent breath, consistent practice, both spiritual and physical, then It's not about like, oh, if I do this today, I don't have to do it tomorrow. It's like, no, you find the joy in doing it every day for a little bit of time so that it begins to permeate every single step and activity of your life. And rather than, oh, if I'm, I got to get that meditation in this morning, can't I meditate while I'm talking to my friend? Can I find meditation while I'm washing my dishes? Even in a fight, right? If I'm, Oh my God. And I mean, I don't know where I'm at on the scale of getting it right or not, because I'm not trying to compare myself to anyone other than who I was yesterday. I will have moments where I am literally in a trigger or like, I am frustrated. And then my higher self, I call her my favorite self. She'll be like, you really shouldn't say this. You really shouldn't send that text message. You really should just slow down. You really should just go sit on your meditation cushion. Right. And sometimes it still happens where I'm like, no, I'm doing it anyways. And then I'll be like, all right, I really should probably just go meditate. And so there's this, there's this like coming to, right. Where we can hear and see and like start to really like respond in different ways. And some days it's easier and some days it's high, harder. And it usually has to do with if you've slept or eaten or not. <laughs> But it becomes this like really beautiful, fragile human experience where you recognize you're not alone either. So when you're surrounded by people that are similar in doing the work, it's fun because you're calling each other up and you're meeting each other's like moments and you're not afraid to be like, hey, we didn't do this right. Or this is disorganized. This doesn't feel good because you're speaking to yourself and you're lifting yourself up too. And so it becomes less of this like beating your head against the wall and more about this like consistent, eloquent dance of an upward spiral of growth. I love it. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. So what are some of the things, some of the tools, some of the exercises, um, some of the, I guess, daily practices that you try and encourage your, um, your, your clients, the people that you work with? Um, mm. Because this is, this is what you now do for a living. This is, this is your thing, working with people and trying to uh, create authenticity within themselves. And um, that's my understanding. Is that correct? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> authenticity and full expression. In, and I say full expression. What I mean in full expression is like, how do you express yourself safely? Because I, again, and, and I'm going to unpack this a little bit. It's like growing up too. So how often, and tell me if you've ever experienced this, like, Happiness, joy, and ease are very accepted, but like pain, suffering, grief, challenge, like Mm -hmm. some of these things are less uh, applicable or like they're not as seen as beautiful to express. But when we can, when we have the proper tools and communication tools, it's like, no, we want to express ourselves fully. We want to feel anger, sadness, cha-cha-cha. We just don't want to feel them um, at a restaurant with our waiter because we didn't feel them at work in our board meeting all day. (laughs) Yeah. Um, So some of the tools, my gosh. And this is so funny. It's, It's really, for me, it feels very basic and they're very simple tools because I think that's the point of life. I think the, the more simple we can make things that the uh, easier it'll be, but a morning practice, Um, something that gets you up and out of bed and into a state of beginner's heart and mind. So what that looks like is, and and again, these are just like, it's a treasure chest of information. People can pick whatever they want, but um, like morning pages, 
writing a minimum of three pages every day to kind of get anything that's still in your mind from the night before, the week before, get it out get it out, make space. And then in that space, meditation, and there's so many forms of meditation. I would love, we can share a form of meditation today together, but, um, whether it's a Vedic meditation, a TM, a breath work, um, something again, to get the energy, the life force in your body, really moving in a way that's expansive, creating vitality because vitality, once you're, once you're connected to yourself and I'm talking core self, right? Not all the like frivolous, outer self like the the truth that spine i call this the spine is like the sword the sword of truth it's sort of discernment. anything is possible from that place um from there i do believe in movement like oh my gosh in my tantric lineage breath sound and movement are all there really is to creating a state of consciousness that feels good to releasing anything that doesn't serve so movement whether it's yoga hiking, I mean, boxing, it doesn't matter what kind of movement, as long as it feels good and it encourages your body to feel strong, strong body, strong mind. Um, and then from there, I think community like that, I think community is a really big tool. I think having people in your lives that really support you and, and see you and are re reciprocal in their desire to give and to receive and feedback, open communication. I think that's an incredibly important tool as well. Right. Yeah. Yeah. What, now, do you, uh, please. Uh, what do I do? I, you know, you mentioned uh, writing in the morning. I've started doing that. Well, I, I look at the news first thing in the morning in my own way, not conventional news, but I check up on news and that, that never really makes me feel good. Um, so <laughs> then, then I put that down right, and I pick up my book. I read a couple, you know, positive insights, and then I write a little bit, release that, put that away, which has then gotten me in a, in a more positive state of mind. And at that point, I'm in a good place. And I also feel informed. Mm. <laughs> right. So, um, and, and then usually later in the afternoon, I will do something that um, where I can reconnect with myself. Um, and maybe in the evening, if I if I'm lucky enough to, um, and the days usually just kind of flow together. Um, you know, I've got a couple core things that I need to do each day, and then I I see how it weaves itself into something that makes sense. Um, that's the way my days normally go, and that that for me really works well. Mm. Before it used to just be like a hyper spasm of, of tasks and chores every day um, <laughs> and uh, a lot of anxiety attached to it. And I, I don't have that much these days, which is terrific. Well, you had mentioned maybe doing a, um, a you know, a short meditation mm -hmm. or an exercise or what are your thoughts around that? Yeah, I, I love that. Was it the honey heart meditation? Is that what we yeah. had spoken of? Yeah, <laughs> okay. we can do a honey heart meditation. Okay. Um, do you want to do that now? We could. Absolutely. Okay, okay cool. Well, let me share. I'm going to share the why behind it before yes, we please. dive in. Yes. So, and it's, it's perfect with what you had mentioned, actually. It's like, I know our, okay. So my generation, we like to like wake up and look on our phones immediately. <laughs> yes. I can attest to that. I'm not different than you. Um, I do try very hard not to. But it's interesting because that for whatever it is that we see, whether it's good or bad information, that like instantly sets the tone of where we're at. And so mm -hmm. this meditation, the happy honey heart meditation is an opportunity to start from within, right? If you wake up or, you know, even my clients, when they wake up, I, I inspire them to create the, I call it the vase of your day, right? It's like, okay, okay spirit, I am a vessel. And I'm showing up in gratitude today. I'm showing up like a honey drenched butterfly kiss. <laughs> I wouldn't say that all the time, but that's where I'm at today. <laughs> okay, um, great. <laughs> um, and so when we create the vessel, right? And we say, okay, this is where I'm at. The universe is gonna meet us there. I'm waking up in a crabby mood. Universe is gonna meet me. I stub my toe, I spill my coffee. There's a lot of traffic and I'm upset. But if I wake up and I'm like, ugh, what a day. 
what a perfect day. What a miraculous day. What a day of, of mer- wonder and ease, right? I'm going to be met. And even if there is traffic or I spill my, my, my coffee, I'm not grumbling about it. I'm like, oh, cute. Look at me. I spill my coffee. <laughs> I have a rag for that. Look at this rag, you know? So, so this meditation is an opportunity to get the body set so that the quantum field of possibility has an idea, right? I like to think of us as like we're bases or we're vessels and we have these antenna. Our intentions, our, our energy allows us to attract particular things into our field. And so if we create that base of gratitude, then the universe is like, oh, she's looking for things to be grateful for today. Maybe if we throw her an extra client or an adventure or no traffic and $20 on the ground, <laughs> whatever, <Perfect>. like dream big <laughs> but <laughs> to each their own. Um, yeah. So it, so it is, it's just an opportunity to come into a, a different frequency of, um, you know, how, how you want to show up for the world and for yourself too. You hey, you yes, I am ready. Okay, cool. So let's go ahead and just find your comfortable seat. Go ahead and close your eyes. Okay. And once your eyes are closed, I want you to just feel into your core. So here you are connecting to your inner sword strength and presence by first taking a deep breath into your hips and feel where they land on your seat. You can inhale deep, exhale with a and we'll just do that two more times into the hips. Ah. Last one. And really feel yourself land here on your seat. Ah. Okay. Already notice the stability and the serenity that comes from simply being where you are. From there, I want you to bring your awareness up from the base of your spine and land just where your ribs meet under your heart, just above your belly button. I want you to press your hips into your seat, pulling the low belly up and in, and then pull your ribs back towards the back of your chair. Create this strong lock in the low body. It will naturally open and lift your heart. And here in the belly, we'll take another three breaths. So you connect here to your, to your gut instinct, inhaling deep and exhaling with the sound. Ah. And I want you to give me a sound of relief. Like you're reminding your body that it's okay to be here, to rest and rejuvenate. Oh. Yes, and we'll do that one more time. Okay. And with that strong core, I want you to carry your awareness now ever so gently up into the heart. And here in the heart, we'll take another three breaths, sighing it out. Ah. Ah. Oh. And on this last one, see if you can't breathe up into the collarbones, really feeling yourself deep, deep, deep breath. Ah. Beautiful. Again, notice the, the ease and the peace in your body as you come into the self and bringing your awareness, your power just into this space. And then we're going to lift the awareness up through the neck, feeling the neck, the head above the shoulders. And then bring your awareness all the way to the top of your head. Just where, if you were wearing a crown, you could feel that crown sitting ever so gently. And I want you to tune in as you breathe. We're gonna take three breaths here now from your root 
And as you breathe from your root, you're gonna breathe up your strong spine to the crown and then exhale like a waterfall of relief. Ah, beautiful, two more. Ah. And then on this last one, I want you to hold your breath at the top. Feel yourself buoyant and full. So breathe up from the base to the crown. Hold your breath. Pull up on your pelvic floor. Sip in a little bit more air. Hold your breath. Relax your jaw. Hold your breath. Relax your shoulders. Sip in more air. Feel yourself full of light, of love, of vitality. And then exhale fully, deep release. Ah. ah. Yeah, you can shake your shoulders a little bit. Keep those eyes closed. Ah, wow, so land here. Land here and feel the rise and the fall of your lungs as you just become curious about your body and this magical breath that animates you from the inside out. Beautiful. And now take a hand on your heart. I want you to tune into this sacred space, this heart that is always beating for you, keeps you alive, the seat of unconditional love and compassion. I want you to fill this heart of yours with an internal grin. Yes, I want you to really feel a smile from the inside out in your heart. And as you breathe, I want you to imagine that there is a honey-like magical glow in the air that you breathe. I mean, there's something special in the air. Otherwise, how would you be here? So as you breathe these honey-like glow, this golden rich nourishing breath into your heart, every breath amplifies and coats that internal grin with honey-like sweetness. So as you sip this air in, into the grin within, notice that your heart gets so full of joy, of peace, of expansiveness, that it actually starts to beat. And that beating moves this honey-like grin through your blood vessels. And you start to feel this grin moving down your arms into your fingertips. And so everything you touch today becomes an extension of your personal bliss. And as you keep breathing this honey-like sweetness, your heart keeps beating until this bliss moves down into your belly where your stomach starts to smile. Even your liver and your kidneys join for this honey-like ride. The heart keeps beating, the blood moves down into your pelvis, your place of creativity, your power. Ah. You feel this internal grin moving down into your legs, this honey-like breath moving all the way into your feet, the tips of your toes. So now every step that you take is also an opportunity to spread more peace, 
to connect joyfully everywhere you go. And as you keep breathing into this honey-like magic, notice that your brain begins to shift as the honey-like sweetness from your heart beats all the way up to your head. Your thoughts clear and dissipate and you're filled with gratitude instead. Notice the smile on your face and that it started from within. You didn't need to pick up your phone to see what was happening. Yeah. So feel your full body covered in this honey-like sweetness, your whole body radiating, radiating this internal bliss. And then we'll seal it with three more breaths. So we'll inhale from the root to the crown and exhale with honey like sweetness. Ah, two more. Ah, good, breathing in the honey like sweetness from around. And then you let it out to others with a beautiful exhale sound. Ah, good. And then when you're ready and you feel that this is landed, and bring a little movement to your body. Yeah. And then gently blink your eyes open. <laughs> hmm. Thank you for that. Yeah. Wow. Oh, I feel good. Oh. <laughs> yeah, we're gonna have a little, con a little trouble concentrating for the rest of the, uh, our little interview. <laughs> <laughs> I'm in like another zone completely. <laughs> <laughs> well, I love it. But this zone is like all perpetuated by yourself. And think about if more people showed up in life with this knowing, right? Mm -hmm. There's such a bigger picture going on. And when we don't get swept away with the mundane or the illusion of what's happening outside of us, when we come from this place of wholeness, and, and this connection to something that's so much more miraculous than we even know, we carry that medicine to others. People wanna be around us and be a part of our experience. We have wisdom to share because it's coming from this really sweet and innocent place of. Knowing. Yeah, I really, I really do like that meditation. Yeah, thank you for that. You're welcome. Yeah, I just, I really, I, I do want to mention a lot of my work right now is it's femininity and fullest expression. And okay. within that, you know, vulnerability, authenticity, our desires, our fears, our worries, right? When, when women and men, I, I want to speak towards women though, because I think that women have been more silenced in the past, you know, excuse me, decade or so, Fair enough, yeah. but I believe that there's a power of coming into the knowing that our voices matter and our state of mind matters. And so even as Afra mentioned, like coming from this blissful state, I can still have my fears and my worries, my angers, my frustrations, but I'm communicating them from a place of honey rather than vinegar or anger. And so when we come to life and we can be in this space and really sweetly share with another human our truth, it actually creates the opportunity for real growth to happen. I think that women have a lot more power than they think and that we all want to know what's working and what, what, what isn't working. So in partnership, right? Like, Hey, honey, I'm angry that like, you know, X, Y, Z hasn't happened, or we spoke about this and we're still acting in this way. But if we come from it, from innocence and sweetness that creates like, wow, I had no idea you felt that way. Like, how do we change this? Or even with friends, you know, hey, I, I notice I'm like really overwhelmed, but I'm still in love. Like I'm never gonna leave you. I don't wanna fight about it. And when women can stand for their expression, because women are the, we are the expressors. That's just, sure. mm -hmm. it's how it's supposed to work. So when we're like, you know, I don't stand for inequality. I don't stand for what's happening in the world. I don't stand for greed. I don't stand for how we're acting right now. I don't stand for the perpetuation of a culture that is completely burned out and falling apart. That when a woman can say that to herself, first and foremost, she changes at a cellular level. Her life changes. The actions that she takes changes. Then when she's got that down, she can say that to her partner, to her friends, to her family. Because of a woman's 
deep desire for harmony, right? We, I mean, Mother Earth wants harmony. Mother Earth is fertile and abundant. That's, that's a woman. That's what women want for the planet. When women can say that to others, that creates more harmony and abundance in the world for others, more ease, more play, more joy. And then on a macro scale, right? If all women everywhere were standing up to their partners, to, to life, I just think that there would be like a monumental movement of change in a really foundational way. And not to say that we don't need the masculine because the masculine is so important, but if there was harmony between men and women, which does require women to come and stand up and then men to really honor that, like it is, it's a team, it's a team game. It's a team game. Um, well, I so do feel like a lot of women, when they try and stand up and they do that actually by stepping into the masculine, when in fact they need to, or I feel like what they need to do is really embrace their feminine and you can move larger mountains if you're a woman and you step into your feminine versus try and step into a masculine, which often isn't quite congruent. Mm, yes. I don't know if I, I was accurate, but that's just my perception. A hundred percent. It's so, it's just, it's a different playing field completely, right. but it is, it's like a woman's power comes from the, the femininity, the ability to express and to feel without so much of the, the doing and the forcing, right. but it's that connection to the authentic expression. I think I'm a sensualist too. I didn't even talk about okay. this, but Let's talk about it. Oh, great. Yeah. Well, you know, so for me, oh my God, it's so funny. Cause I don't even really consider myself. I'm like, I don't, I'm not super into like the coaching world, Okay. but I think it's just because I come from like a very ancient lineage of like apprenticeship, like warlocks and apprentices. And like, you know, you go on a journey to meet your mentor, but they're not, but it's because like they've lived an experience. Right. And so what happened for me was like, I can't be too heady because I came from that. You know, school is very heady and heady is good to like, okay, I'm going to listen to what you're saying. And then literally I'm going to spew it out at you. But did I, do I remember any of it? No, because it's my body. Trauma lives in the body. That's why I'm a tantric practitioner first and foremost is because breath, sound and movement, like the experiences live. I can tell myself a hundred times over, like, I am this, I am this, I am this, I am great. I am powerful. I'm abundant. But until my body knows that until my body feels safe, like I can tell myself I'm safe all day, but it, it's an experience in the body. So my work is very sensual in the way that it's, it's audible smells, incense, oils, um, you know, the visualization of a honey experience, there's a color and a texture. And that to me is a, such an easier way to educate because it's actually like your mind and your body are connected. So when you give it something to like, hold on to, to taste and to, to experience, I think that this, this shift happens a lot easier. So it's what I do with my clients in so many different ways, like with themselves, with their environments. It's really powerful. You know, if I was teaching a transmission, right? If I was going to have an hour long talk about something, it would be me telling you all of this. I need you okay. to shake out the past, right? I'm not shaking it out with you, but when I work with my clients one-on-one, -on -one, that's when we really go into this stuff of like, no, I'm going to make you shake your body for two hours until you literally have a breakthrough. And it doesn't happen in the mind at that point. It happens all in right. the body. Right, right. You know, in Kundalini yoga, you do these exercises. You're holding your hands up in the air for fucking 22 minutes. You think it's about your arms up in the air. It has nothing to do with that. It has to do with the mind coming to a breaking point where it realizes that it has nothing to do with thinking you can hold your arms up in the air. It all has to do with connecting to something bigger than yourself that then there is nothing to hold up in the air. It just is. <laughs>